Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Prospect Charter School's Algebra 1 course. Today we are going over section 7.1, Integer Exponents. So the question becomes, what is an exponent and what is an integer? Well we already know what an integer is. And an integer is a countable number. Integers are the countable numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. So the countable numbers. So next part is, what is an exponent? Well, let's say for a moment we look at addition. Now, if I take the same number and I add it over and over and over again, we call this multiplication. So for an example, if we look at this one, I have one, two, three, four, five twos. So I would say this is really two times five, which gives us 10. Multiplication is just addition over and over and over again. So what happens if we multiply over and over and over again. For an example, let's say that we have two times two times two times two times two times two times two. Well, looking at it, we would have multiplied two by itself one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So, as you know, mathematicians tend to be rather lazy. They don't like having to write numbers over and over and over again. We really don't like doing that, especially when we're having to do an infinite number of numbers. That would just take forever, literally. So we create a shorthand notation. This shorthand notation has a base raised to an exponent. So this bottom portion on the bottom is the base, at which point we would probably, if we were you know, watching some kind of weird movie, instead of a lame Mr. O'Neill movie, we'd probably have like some dub de dubstep going blah, 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 because you know, we just dropped the base. The base goes on the bottom, just like with a vase. If you look at a vase, the base of the vase almost always goes on the bottom. Because if it doesn't, then if this base or this vase was filled with Queen Anne's lace and you put the base of the vase on top, then you spill all the flowers on the bottom and the Queen Anne's lace gets a little upset. And then you make your wife cry and then it's bad and you don't want to do that. So let's not make my wife cry. Let's try to make sure that the base always goes on the bottom. And then you have the part that makes it so that atheists can't do math because atheists don't believe in a higher power. That's right, this number up here is the power, or the exponent. This number, exponent, this number represents how many times the base multiplies itself. So in this case, two to the seventh is equal to two times two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Now doing some arithmetic, we could of course do this. We could say two times two is four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. So we would say this is really 128. But a lot of times we won't know what the base is or we won't know what the exponent is, in which case we would have x's in those positions, which means that we still need to learn the basics. And the basics are, this is the base, that's the power, the base goes on the bottom, the power goes on top, the power represents how many times the base multiplies itself. Okay. Now there are some special rules when dealing with these. The first rule is the zero exponent rule. Zero exponent rule. The zero exponent rule is really simple. Any number other than zero raised to the zero power is one. Any number other than zero
raised to the zero power is one. Now, of course, I know you guys love examples, so let's give a few. Two to the zero power. Yeah, that's one. Five to the zero power. Yep, that's one. Pi to the zero power. Still one. A million to the zero power is one. How about Google to the zero power? Yep, that's still one. So no matter what number I choose, whether it be rational, irrational, positive, negative, doesn't really matter. Okay, so we'll do a negative number. Negative one raised to the zero power, yeah, that's one. Note that the negative one happens to be in parentheses because order of operations, right? Because if we saw a negative one to the zero power, or sorry, uh, let's make it a different number. Let's try negative five. Negative five to the zero power. By order of operations, you do the exponent first, which turns the five into one, and then you keep the negative, so this actually becomes negative one. Remember your order of operations. So any number raised to the zero power will always be one, as long as it's not zero. Zero to the zero power is indeterminate. Now, some of you are probably asking, Mr. O'Neill, why? Why is it that every number raised to the zero power goes to one? Hmm. Well, to explain that, I think we need to look at it in detail and do a little experiment. Let's start with the number three. Let's say that we have three to the zero, three to the first, three to the second, three to the third, and three to the fourth. These numbers are 81, 27, 9, 3. And the 3 to the 0, we're going to wait for a moment to think about what's happening. Let's start out by saying we're at 3 to the 4th power. We would start out at 81. Now, going from 81 to 27, what did we have to do? Well, to go there, we had to divide by 3. 81 divided by 3 is 27. What about from 27 to 9? Well, doing that, again, we're going to divide by 3. So then we take that 9, we divide it by 3, and where do we end up? At 3 to the 1st. So going from 3 to the 1st to 3 to the 0, what do you think we have to do? Well, if we're following the pattern, we would divide by 3. What's 3 divided by itself? 1. Don't believe me? Try another number. Let's try 2. 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th. Okay, 2 to the 4th is 2, 4, 8, 16, 8, 4, and 2 respectively. From 16 to 8, what do you do? Divide by 2. 8 to 4, divide by 2. 4 to 2, divide by 2. So what do we do with that 2? Yep, we divide it by 2 and we get 1. Does it matter what number that I'm going to use? Probably not, because every single time we're always dividing by whatever the base is. And at the end, we have the base divided by itself, which would mean we would always end up with 1, with the exception of 0 to the 0, which is an indeterminate form. We'll get into that later on in life. But for now, any non-zero number raised to the 0 power will always give you 1. But what about negative exponents? Hmm. We could go another further, a step further, couldn't we? We could take this 3 to the 0 and turn it into 3 to the negative first. We could take this 2 to the 0 and do 2 to the negative first, and 3 to the negative second, and 2 to the negative second. Well, if we keep with the pattern, on the 3s we'd be dividing by 3. What's 1 divided by 3? Well, that would be 1 third. What's 1 third divided by 3? Well, that would be 1 ninth. Well, if we look at it, compare. 
3 to the negative first is 1 over 3 to the first. 3 to the negative second is 1 over 3 to the second. Can you tell me what's going to happen when I go to 3 to the negative third? Hmm. Yep, you're right. It becomes 1 over 3 to the third. Now, 3 might just be the exception of the rule instead of the rule itself, so let's try it with 2 on the other side. What's 1 divided by 2? 1 half. Coincidence? What's 1 half divided by 2? Well, that's 1 fourth. Coincidence? I think not. So this leads us to our next rule, the negative exponent rule. So we write down negative exponent rule. And the negative exponent rule says a non-negative number raised to a negative exponent is equal to 1 divided by that number raised to the opposite positive exponent. Uh, would you like an easier version? How about this one? Just flip it. Seriously, you just flip it. You know how we've been working with fractions a lot? So if we had 3 fourths divided by 2 thirds, or sorry, um, let's go with 3 halves. You know how you divide by a fraction? You just flip and multiply, right? We take the original number, we leave it alone, and then we take the second number, we flip it, and we multiply. Which, of course, worked out quite nicely, and you just get 1 half. So when we're looking at these with the negative exponent rule, we can have fractions for our base. It says non-zero, and fractions are non-zero, so you can have that. So if we're looking at something like 1 half, or 2, raised to the negative third, you just flip it. This is really 2 over 1 raised to the negative third. Well, we just flip it and turn it positive. It becomes 1 half raised to the third power, which we both know as 1 over 8. So you just flip it. To get rid of the negative exponent, flip the fraction. That way we don't get as confused when we see something like 2 thirds raised to the negative third power. When we do that, to get rid of the negative, the first thing we do is we flip the fraction. We get 3 halves. Now 3 halves raised to the third power is 3, 3 halves times 3 halves times 3 halves which is the same thing as 3 to the third power divided by 2 to the third power, which is 27 over 8. Which, of course, leads us to the next rule. The negative exponent rule says we just flip it. To get rid of the negative, we flip the fraction that is the number that is the base. The next portion of it we notice right here. What happened when we had a fraction raised to a power? Well, both the top and the bottom get raised to that power. So this is called the fractional power rule. And the fractional power rule says, if it's a fraction, it's a friend. No, I'm not going to say that. If it's a fraction, then both the top and the bottom are raised to that power. So, for example, two-thirds raised to the third power becomes 2 to the third over 3 to the third which becomes 8 over 27. 1 fifth raised to the negative fourth power and let's make it 2 fifths becomes, well we've got the negative right so we just flip it becomes 5 halves raised to the fourth power, which becomes 5 to the fourth over 2 to the fourth, 
which becomes, let's see, 25 times 25, on, and 2 to the 4th is 2, 4, 8, 16. So it's going to be over 16. Multiplying these guys together really quick, I get, um, let's see, 5 times 5 is 25. So it's 5, 6, 7. If it will let me write, 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So I get 575? That can't be right. Hold on. Let's try that again. 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. I get 625. That's better. So we get 625 over 16. So our fractional power rule says that if it's a fraction, both the top and the bottom are raised to that power. This is only when it's inside of parentheses. If it's not inside the parentheses, for example, if I see um, 2 to the third over 16, I don't actually raise the 16 to the third power. I only raise the 2 to the third power. So this would become 2 to the third power, which is 8 over 16, which is 1 half which is not the same as 2 over 16 raised to the third power, which would be 8 over an ungodly large number that I'm not going to try calculating right now. Okay, so remember, if it's in parentheses, then you do the top and the bottom. If it's not in parentheses, it only does what it's attached to because of the order of operations. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next part. which is what happens when there are letters involved. Well, I know what you guys are thinking. Oh my god, letters! Well, don't worry, don't worry. If you don't know what you're talking about, just use the letter. For an example, let's say I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna use the letter X. And that X is gonna be raised to the negative third power. How do I deal with that? Well, I know to make it not negative anymore, I flip it. So I take that X, which is really X over one, and I raise it to the negative third power, so I flip it. So it becomes 1 over x to the third power. What if I have 4y to the negative second? Well, note that only the y is being raised to the negative second in this, play, in this um, situation. So the 4 is a multiplier. The 4 stays out of it. So it becomes 4 on the outside of y to the negative second. Well, that y gets flipped to 1 over y, turning the exponent positive, which then, of course, becomes 1 over y squared. And we know that 4 times 1 over y squared is 4 over y squared. Why do we do this? Order of operations. Grouping symbols, exponents, multiplication, addition. We have to do the exponent first. The grouping symbol says that because 4 is being multiplied, we don't get there until we reach the M in Gemma. So we're not going to get there for a long time. We have to do the exponent first. Follow your order of operations. It will be your friend. Okay. That is all for today. So let's go ahead and do section 7.1 for your bug work. Section 7.1 Hashtag Math rocks Don't you love those higher powers? Poor atheists can't do multiplication over and over again because they don't believe in higher powers. Section 7.1 Numbers or hashtags 1 through 23 odd and if you know there are that many, that means they're all going to be super easy. Then let's do 25, uh, 29, 33, 41, 43, 51, 53, 55, 57. Yes, I know, I'm very, very mean. I'm giving you all these problems, and you're crying, and that's okay, because 59 just showed up as did 65 
and so did 67 which is okay because we're in senior citizen land so there can't be that many left well you're wrong 73 75 79 and 91 With this many on there, you know they're all going to be super easy. So don't fret. Don't worry. This will be easy. You can do it. I know you can because you are smart. Because if you were not smart, I don't know what you'd be doing, but you wouldn't be at school. People who aren't smart don't go to school. All right. Good luck and have fun.